So I thought to myself, I should probably do a few holiday movies, seeing as how it's December and all. And I can't decide if Rise of the Guardians is a Christmas movie or an Easter movie. So why not both? Good enough! Rise of the Guardians is a beautifully detailed animation, but there were tons of questions that came to mind while I was watching it. In particular, I'm really left wondering where the Guardians come from. Okay, I know, I know, the movie flat out shows us that the man in the moon chooses and creates these magical people who oversee certain events, happenings, and or holidays. Jack Frost was chosen because he had saved his sister from falling through thin ice, but it was a very vague selection process. Sure, Jack performed a heroic deed and all, but it's not like he's the only person to sacrifice himself to save someone else. And it's not like he really knew that he was going to die. It was actually a lack of control of his momentum that betrayed him. We also get a hint in the film that the Easter Bunny used to be a cutesy little rabbit. Perhaps he was a rabbit who sired more children than any other rabbit of his time. And that's why he's in charge of Easter, which represents birth and new beginnings. But it's fairly solidified that all of the Guardians and their similar counterparts like the Leprechaun, the Groundhog, Pitch Black, they all came from normal living beings who exemplified the spirit of their holiday during their lifetimes. Although that does make me wonder, what did Pitch Black do to turn into the Boogeyman? Like seriously, he had to be stabbing orphans as a human to get that kind of a gig for the rest of eternity. But here's the part that gets under my skin. If Jack Frost is supposed to be the bringer of snow and coldness, what the heck was going on before Jack fell through the ice? Obviously, winter was happening long before Jack was around because he was ice skating when he died. And by the look of the wardrobe, I'd speculate that Jack's human life was somewhere in the 17 or 1800s. But if Jack Frost was a human being around when snow and coldness already existed, who was controlling the snow and cold before that? Did you notice that when Pitch destroys the Sandman, all the other guardians kind of light candles and have this little funeral kind of thing for him? Isn't that weird? Someone should be saying, that's not right. We can't die. We're concepts. And the Guardians don't say anything like that because they know that their positions of power do not include immortality. Which means that there must have been multiple people chosen to fill the various holiday and event roles throughout history. North is very interesting when playing with this concept. While there are various origin stories mixed in for when and where Santa started, the first accounts come from Turkey in 280 AD. Meanwhile, North is very clearly Russian, and he appears to be from the Bratva, meaning brotherhood, the term used for the Russian mafia. The culture of the Bratva is very big on tattoos, and those tattoos are meant to tell your life story. And the imagery is very diverse, just shy of being its own form of hieroglyphics. For example, if you have stars tattooed on your knees, it means that you will not follow anyone else. A dagger by your collarbone means that you killed someone while in prison. And a tat of a sexy pinup girl meant that you're a snitch. And if you had no tattoos, you had no life. And people who have no ink on their skin are considered very untrustworthy. So I cannot emphasize enough how big a deal these tattoos are in that culture. Now that doesn't mean that the mafia members are necessarily evil criminals though. Oftentimes mafias were anti-government, but pro the little guy. So they were very adored in their communities, especially in a place like Russia where not many government rulers or czars were kind or benevolent. But we can see that Santa's tattoos aren't really gang related. They're really Christmas themed. And I think there's a reason for that. When we see Jack as a human, he has brown hair and eyes. When he dies, we see him transform into having white hair and blue eyes. Similarly, I think it's safe to estimate that any of North's tattoos would have been stripped from his skin as he transformed because he was leaving that old life behind. But out of habit, North felt the need to rebrand himself because with no tattoos, you have no life, no story. And so he did it in a way that told the story of his new life as Santa Claus. And judging by North's use of swords and the fact that he has an enchanted sleigh, meaning he probably died with those things like Jack died with his staff, 
That would mean North died at least 100 years ago, more likely than not. Now, since Santa dates all the way back to 280, and the Russian Mafia is known to have started in 1721, so that's the farthest back that we could date North, that means it's impossible for North to be the only Santa Claus that's ever existed. So not only can Guardians die, they're replaceable. Initially, I thought that Sandy came back at the end of the movie because darkness cannot completely destroy light and all that yin-yang dialogue mixed in with Jamie's power to believe in goodness resurrecting Sandy. But I'm starting to wonder if Sandy came back at all or if another Sandman was put in his place. Yes, the Sandman we see at the beginning and end of the film looks the same, but we're really unclear as to how much an appearance alters when you take on one of these guardian roles. And do we really think that the Tooth Fairy looked this way in her past life? So we're shown that the role you take on can drastically change the way you look. Meaning the return of Sandy could have actually been the rise of a new Sandman that had just lost his human life and came into power as a guardian. Sure, it seems like the Sandman recognizes Pitch Black when he returns, but wouldn't Pitch being an evil force that needed stopped also be something that the Man in the Moon briefed him about while he was transforming into the Sandman? I mean, we really don't get any definitive proof that it is the same Sandy other than he looks alike and he doesn't even show much that says, I remember all of you guys and I'm so happy to see everyone. It just feels a little bit off to me. And look how out of control Sandman's powers are, creating all these crazy things, even a giant sand dinosaur that's walking the streets. He's acting like he's never used his abilities before and he's testing their limitations. So I'm curious what you guys think. Are the Guardians replaceable? And do we get the same Sandy back at the end of the film? Thanks for watching this video. And if you liked it, I hope you'll like, subscribe, and check out what other videos are on my channel. Please definitely subscribe though, so that way you'll be notified when I make new videos. And if you really, really, really want to help me out, please share this video with people that you think would enjoy watching it. Thanks again.